07. Um, so calling the meeting to order at 608 now for the recording. Um, and this is a special meeting to for of the POCD subcommittee to discuss the uh, the next steps. Um, and um, we have been discussing before the meeting, um, just for the record, um, getting started with the with the survey and the different uh, documents that that Glenn has put together. So Glenn, why don't you say uh, what you started out by saying, and then we'll, we'll see what Karen has to say. Yeah. Okay, um, so let me just back up since we're on, on tape right now, if you will, that uh, I've been doing research and investigation and interviews, et cetera, as part of the preparation of the POCD elements. Um, I would anticipate as part of our schedule to have my research investigation done. I would imagine the group getting together to start talking about conservation related strategy sometime uh, towards the end of September. The Preliminary census data has been released, but at this point in time, it's just the redistricting data. So all we have for Kent is population and a housing count, but really not much more in terms of age distribution or other data. Yeah. But we expect that to come out in the fall. So what I anticipate doing is, I think last time as part of the POC update, there was a state of the town report. And I think that was one of the first work elements. And I think we're going to be uh, compiling, preparing the same type of information, but it is just, I, I would suggest we just wait until the census data is out. So we have the most current and up-to-date data. Um, and that'll allow us to do the age demographics analysis and, and the other stuff that I think is important for the plan. And depending on where we are in the strategy phase at that point in time, we can adjust our strategies based on what that data shows. This is we're gonna adjust strategies based on what the survey tells us. So that's what I think is the overall schedule in terms of uh, where we're at and how it's going. Um, at our meeting, I think it must have been back in on my notes here. Um, this was July. 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 Yeah, we were talking about the survey. Um, so uh, the question was to try to uh, schedule the survey in. Um, somewhere between uh, middle of August and end of September, somewhere in that window. Um, so in anticipation of that, I updated the survey instrument and I prepared some PR materials. And so what I'd like to do, I guess, is just kind of walk through the survey real quick. Is, is that okay? Have you seen the survey questions? Yeah. Okay. We had a pretty robust discussion about the survey at that meeting that Glenn was talking about. Um, Karen, I, I see you shaking your head. Did um, um, so if 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 we haven't all seen them, then let's 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 run through them quickly. I remember um, there was, as I said, a pretty robust discussion with the with the commission um, and some members of the public. Yep. And uh, and then it was. Adam's suggestion, and I think we all agreed that we wait until the end of the summer right about now. So I think everything that Glenn has said regarding timing is good. So if we run through these um, and they are uh, substantially the same as what we looked at the last time with the updates from that meeting, I think I think we'll be okay. Um, so yeah. okay, so what we're, we're looking at here is the print version of the online survey. Um, I could, I guess, uh, take us into Survey Monkey because it's pretty much uh, ready to rock and roll when the commission gives the uh, green light. Um, but there are two surveys that have been created. The first of which, this one, as you'll notice up here, if you can see on my screen, top left corner is the online survey document. Um, and there's only one difference in the questions between the two of them. Otherwise, they're identical. The other one is print. And that is, you may recall, we had some comments about having print surveys at the senior center and other places like that. So I'll explain to you what the differences are and I'll explain to you where the language has changed along the way. So people will, the um, email, uh, the web address I think is going to be uh, SurveyMonkey, it's Kent CT POCD. Um, and we're working with Donna, we'll get it right up on the town's website. So our goal right now is people can either go to the town website and then click on a link there to SurveyMonkey. We can actually do a QR code um, and have this information on the posters and other things, and also a direct web address uh, for SurveyMonkey to Kent POC Day. 
This would be the first page. It's thanking people for their interest in Kent's future. It's just a quick overview of what the POCD is um, and the types of things it's likely to consider. Um, based on our conversation uh, before on the survey, there were no changes to this page. So this is the same as what we had before. Everybody okay with this page? So the next page is the first question, how did you learn about this online survey? And that's the question which doesn't show up on the print version because it's gonna be sort of a, a, an act of convenience. They're not gonna necessarily go searching for the print survey. Um, most people have smartphones or the computers of the library or other ways that people can do this. SurveyMonkey compiles itself. So I think it could or should be our goal to try to get people to go to the online survey to the extent that we can. But again, for seniors at the senior center who may not be familiar with computers or smartphones and other stuff, um, I think if there's you know a dozen or, or two dozen surveys, we can get those manually entered depending on what we decide to do. So uh, there was no change to that question. Uh, in terms of what's your connection to Kent, we changed the wording of that a little bit and now include full-time resident as an owner, a full-time resident as a renter, full-time resident with housing, housing provided by my employer, which is sort of the school scenarios, um, second home in Kent, you own land here, operate a business here, you don't live or own property here, you just like Kent. And so we give people those options to kind of tell us um, their connection and why they're participating in the survey. Um, we ask people, how long have you lived here? Um, and we added this option down at the bottom that I don't actually live or own property here, but again, I'm, I'm just sort of interested in Kent. The next question is, how would you describe where you live based on the comments from the uh, commission? We asked, added in the town center area. I haven't defined that. I think most people would sort of, you know, it, it's, it's a pretty defined little area that I think people uh, can self-explain that. Um, and then the areas uh, west of the river and north of 341, west and south of 341, and then east um, of the Housatonic again, north and south of 341. Can they hit two or do they, can they, punk, can they click on nope. two? So if they say town center area, they can't say west of the Housatonic River and north of 341. Correct. I mean, okay. they'd have to pick the, the issues, you know, which one, I mean, we, we tend to say which one of these best describes where you live at Kent. So why don't right. we uh, make a note on that? Number four, best describe. Question five is, uh, how important were the following factors in your decision to live in Kent? Um, mm -hmm. We had the word other town amenities in here. We took out other, now it's just town amenities. We added in the specificity of uh, location. Um, close to family, close to work, but there's something about this location that mattered to you. Uh, we added in other as a uh, box at the bottom that people could, you know, something uniquely different that, that they wanted to explore. Um, and the choices again here were very important, somewhat important, really not a factor, and then no opinion. So we'll, we'll kind of understand the elements of Kent that are sticky for people um, and see what they get. And uh, so that you know that this question will be randomized, the order that the roads show up. So it's not always like, you know, you, you start clicking very important on the first couple and then you get tired at the end and you start going down to not a factor. It's going to rotate around depending on where you, uh, you know, who, who participates in the survey. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Okay, so what we're seeing here is not the order in which it's going to be well, since I. It, since I printed this, this it, is the way it was set up. Right, However, right, but, yeah. So okay. if you were to click on it, Donna, and then your husband was to click on it, right. um, the order of these would be different. So right. again, you not it's to, it's to remove any bias that oh well that, you know so and so got the first option. Um, it's to take that out. Uh, anything on this page? The next page is how would you rate the overall quality of life in Kent? Um, up to four things in Kent that you are proud of, up to four things in Kent you are sorry about. Um, and these are things that people could fill in, you know, town hall, the school, Kent Falls, a park, um, a scenic view, almost anything. But we're gonna be able to sort and group these 
again, to figure out the things about Kent that really resonate with people and understand whether they're you know, residents or visitors, second home, et cetera. We can start to look at all of that. Um, and it's been my experience over the years that that's really helpful organizing the plan going forward because you realize that sometimes we get caught up in things, but there's also other things that people think are important, just knowing what those are. Then there was the request to add in this question. Do you see yourself living in Kent in 10 years? Um, yes, no, and if no, why not? <laughs> so nobody's getting out of here alive is what we're gonna ask. Um, next question has to do with a list of possible goals for the town. We supplemented this list quite a bit based on our conversation. We added the word possible in here. Um, we haven't committed to these goals yet. Um, but we added in uh, phraseology about climate change. We added in a question about sustainability and resiliency. We added in a line item about improving river access, reducing our carbon footprint, promoting agriculture, addressing vehicle charging stations, uh, protecting cultural resources, um, broadband access, and improving wireless service. And then there's also another other at the bottom here. So people would go down this list. And again, the choices and the options are, this is very important to them, somewhat important, not very important, or they just simply have no opinion on it. So this will be interesting to give us a sense of people's priorities in terms of going forward. And then there's a follow-up question to this which is how well do you think the town is doing addressing these goals? So the very same categories are in place here. So it's quite possible with people would say, hey, broadband access is a very important issue for me. And I think the town's doing a fair or poor job on that. Well, that's kind of out of our control, but you know, we understand now that that's what we might call a deficiency. It's important to people, but we, we, we have to try to do a better job about showing results. And so we can almost end up with a matrix for all of these in terms of where they show up, how we think we're doing um, uh, in terms of these uh, issues. Any questions about this? No. Nope. Well, that's top of this page is the end of those questions. Um, then an open-ended question, what do you see as the greatest challenge or need facing Kent in the next 10 to 20 years? So rather than this, if somebody could have important all the way down the line here on you know, what's important to them. There's no limitation on how many that they would, they would put there. But then this asks them, what do they think is the greatest challenge or need? And if you could make one thing happen in Kent to make it a better place, what would that be? And that actually is a very useful question. It's gonna get us some precision on the things that you know, people would really kind of want us to focus on uh, as part of the plan. Um, we talked about this question here about whether or not you'd be willing to spend more in taxes to help make that happen. And we talked a little bit about the dollar amount and I simply went with 50 or $100 more per year. Then we'll see you know, what we get in terms of response. And lastly, we have the wrap up of the demographic section. We ask people for their age group, gender, children under the age of 18 living at home. And then finally, whether or not there's any other thoughts they'd like to share with us today. Sometimes surveys ask questions about income and that's a way to try to understand, you know, if people are more amenable to certain things at higher incomes or at lower income levels. I thought about it, it's one of the questions on a survey that people feel least comfortable about. And actually the response to that is often prefer not to answer. So I wasn't sure it was important and I just left it out. But I wanted to bring that to your attention. I'm happy not having that in. Me too. I, I don't think it's relevant to, to the policy making that we're going to do. We're, this is a plan for all Ken residents, regardless of what they make and priorities from everybody. So, um, Glenn, there was a there was a question um, last time we looked at it, it was number thirteen that talked about owning or renting. Did it? Did you go? Did you go through that? Is that on here or is it not on here anymore? It's right up the beginning. Yes. But what is your connection to Kent? You're an owner or you're renting, right? It's right okay, here. It not it's not asked directly, Matt, in the sense that own rent because there's different flavors, right? You can be a full time resident or mm -hmm. part time or 
other options. So I tried to couch it as what's your connection? You're the full-time resident as an owner, a full-time resident as a renter, um, full-time uh, housing provided by employer. It's your second home, you own land here, operate a business here, et cetera. Yeah, okay, good. That's, uh, that, that, that's great, Glenn. So again, the two, the surveys are ready to rock and roll. Um, the only one that would get printed is the print version. I think, Donna, you've got that. I would suggest that uh, try to, we try to be judicious. I wouldn't just put 100 copies at the library because somebody's got to enter those survey results. And it's not a big challenge, but it, it, it can be a, if we can get people and encourage them with posters and other stuff to go online, um, it will tabulate itself. The open endings and other stuff like that can, can be an issue. Do we want to say motion to adjourn for Adam now that he's signed on or? <laughs> <laughs> We'll let them off the hook this time. So the other material I have, let me just bring up, um, let me bring up this one, I think. So the intention here is this would be a poster that could be posted around town hall, post office, town hall, library, IGA, if they'll let us, uh, places around town where we think people will see this. And, and it's meant to sort of, you know, survey how she can plan for its future is generally uh, intrigues people as to what's going on. At the bottom, we have, hey, Adam, how are you? Um, at the bottom, there's little rip tabs here. Um, and so uh, people can take that with them. Uh, I think I'm going to make a note here, add a QR code. Uh, add a QR code for this, and then people can load it up on their phone and then fill it out later after you know they've done shopping or finished their thing at the post office, et cetera. So this is one physically to go around town. Um, it looks like actually the date is now October 3. So that gives us six weeks. And I think that, again, uh, we'll be working on other elements of the plan and factor that in. So I apologize for misstating the date earlier. Now, in addition to this one, which is a physical poster to go around town, we also have this is an eight and a half by eleven email. Looks exactly the same. It's a PDF. So, for example, we might have a list of all members of local boards and commissions, and so an email could go out with this attachment, and they can click right on these links here. Um, and they can also forward this to their contacts, colleagues, et cetera. There's also a JPEG version of this. So the JPEG could go attached into the body of the email, or it could be uh, sent around on social media, um, Facebook, Twitter, other types of things, just to try to expand the awareness in the community of the survey instrument. Um, in addition to that, we have also, oops, also created a press release with a um, quote from Matt at the very bottom here. So don't tell anybody, don't anybody tell Matt exactly what it says. Uh, but we're <laughs> conducting a community survey to get input from uh, residents, property owners, and visitors as part of the updating the plan. Um, the plan, you know, is from 2012. The survey can be accessed from the front page of the website, also accessed directly. Um, for those who don't have access to computers or smartphones, paper copies of the survey will be available at Town Hall, the Senior Center, and the Kent Memorial Library. So I don't know if we want to say that or not, or just people may go searching for it, but they have to have read it in a paper or heard it on the radio or, or something else. And then the quote from Matt is, the survey is a great opportunity for people to tell us about the issues they feel are important to them, to Kent, and all of us who care deeply about the future of this community. Um, so I think it's meant to be just kind of a short blurb. I've put Donna up here as the uh, contact person for this so that if, you know, the Republican American is going to run it or other papers that, um, you know, they might call up and say, well, tell me a little bit more about this and you know, what is a POCD? Um, that uh, Donna can be the point person for that and I'll certainly assist in that as we go. Hey Glenn, would you uh would sh I, I that I, I read this earlier and it's all it all sounds good to me. Would you um put an H E W at the end of my first name? 
Absolutely, yes. Matt, thank you. Thank you. Did I capitalize it like it's a professional certification or something? <laughs> No, I just like to be a little more formal in my in my name when uh, in, in in my public face. I, I understand, Matt. I apologize for not catching that earlier. <laughs> no, just... So I think that that covers the um, aspects, the overview of the survey, the uh, PR materials, which are ready to rock and roll. Uh, if the commission has a specific date, if you want us to roll it out. Tomorrow, I, I maybe I could get everything finished up tomorrow, but I think Donna's got a half day. Um, so I think that what I would probably do is maybe finish it up tomorrow, but get it to Donna. But uh, Donna, is it possible that you could deploy this sometime next week? I mean, the survey will be up and running. And at that point in time, you know, emails could start to go out to members when are of the you, board. When, when are you putting the survey up? I, I can put it up probably tomorrow, but nobody's going to know about it. Right. right. So yeah. No, no, no. I know. I'm just trying to figure out when can we get the press releases out be because I want to get them out before the survey goes live. Well, I think you can get it out after the survey goes live because if okay. people, don't, people don't know about the survey, nobody's going to fill it in. OK. So um, it, it's more important, I think, that the survey be ready so that when somebody hears about it and goes to it, it's there waiting for them. OK. So um, there uh, I only got a few changes to make on here. Um, in terms of the survey questions. So I'll fix both of those. Okay. Um, I imagine, Donna, uh, that the email will come through tomorrow with this stuff, and I will let you know that the survey is live. You'll have the QR code and all of the other stuff. Um, if we're rolling to October 3, we can deploy it as time goes on. And if, for example, there's nothing in the newspaper, or nothing on the radio, or I call you up or email you and say, we're not getting any responses. We can send an email blast out and do other things like that to try to help make people aware. And I think the posters will help too, because even if it's a, you know, the IGA or gas station or something, if, if we can get the posters up where right. people could see it, people will talk about it and uh, get response. <laughs> and we've got a, a good period to drive uh, people to the website. All right. So I think if, if um, Darlene, who, who takes care of the town's website, is not in tomorrow, so yep. I wouldn't be able to do anything then anyway. Yep. Um, so, you know, we can look definitely at next week. Um, I can um, print out the posters. We have a laminating machine. I can laminate them and then just, you know, see if I can't hang around the IGA and see if they'll put one up for me and put one up in the library and um, at the PACO, probably. I mean, that gets, you know, a large sure. um, amount of people that go in and out of there. <laughs> um, I'll work with Leah um, probably on Tuesday, Monday. She doesn't usually work and see if you know, I can print out what I need to print out and give them to her for the Kent Senior Center. Um, and then print out what I need to print out. I don't know, probably maybe 25 or 30 copies for the library so that we're not inundating them. And just ask Sarah um, you know, to push the electronic version. If they uh, would, I mean, I, I, I don't, I, I have seen situations before, Donna, where people have attempted to stuff the ballot box a little bit. Right. When we do it online, I get the IP address. And so I'm able to make sure that if there's duplicates, there, if there's 10 of them from the same IP address, then I, I want to look at the survey responses to see if they're different, refle reflecting the fact that they're different people, or right. whether it's one person trying to stop the ballot box. Right. Paper gets a little bit more challenging. I, I wouldn't want the um, custodian of the library late at night to be filling them out every night. And so we get, you know, 30 copies. I don't think it's right. going to happen. People are very yeah. honest and truthful. Right. But um, one of the best ways to manage that is the online version. Okay. We're also just, we're days away from September 1st and Jean will put out her, her newsletter probably in the, in the first few days. You're so and, good, and, Adam. But she would, I, I it's, it's, so we might as well put it and then there'd actually be something worthwhile on it. Yeah. Well, I can post to the town of Kent's, um, the official town of Kent, uh, Facebook page. And so that's, Oh, that's yeah, that... where that's where it's gone you know i'm not uh, look you know you guys all know how i feel so it's my job to get this done so therefore i will be putting it out on the town of kent's web 
uh, Facebook page. I think okay, you can see it there. I I, I've already worked with Arlene. She knows we've already figured out how we're going to put it on the town's website. And so, yeah. But so I Donna, also don't I'm, think it matters if the website is live even days before <clears throat> it gets out there because right. what's it matter? Right. And Donna, why well, I generally report daily as to what the overnight result, the results in the last 24 hours. So I'll just keep you up to speed. And okay. There, there can be normal lulls in the process, but you know we can uh, re-energize if we need to. Right. I just looked at the calendar. It turns out it's five complete weeks from uh, Sunday the 29th. So one, two, three, four. Oh, hang on a second here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five complete weeks. It's Sunday, October 3. Okay. So I'm pretty sure, Donna, that uh, I will be able to get this done tomorrow, but not perhaps by noon. That's so, fine. So uh, when you come in next week, you should have every, everything in your inbox. And of course, if you need anything, I, I'm here. Okay. So, yeah. every, so how does that work? Do we, um, as of, what is it, Sunday, October 3rd, we accept no more surveys? Yeah, so generally what happens on SurveyMonkey, it has the opportunity to close the survey at a certain time, and then it puts a note up that says, thank you for your interest, but survey closed as of October 3rd. So generally I say, you know, the when I come in Monday morning on October 4th, the first thing on my list is going to be to close the survey and start working with the results so I can report. So it's more for my purposes, but if along the way, we think that there's an extra push or an extra newsletter, we can do another press release. You know, the survey has been extended for a week. I'm happy to do that, but we'll just monitor what we're getting in responses. And it tends to be sort of a long tail, right? We get a bunch of interest and everybody tells everybody else, and then it just starts to drop off. So we'll monitor that. And um, I, I, picked, I picked October 3, but if we want more time, we can certainly do that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you're going to need more time than that. I think because then I think what happens, people are, it doesn't, it becomes, it becomes part of the scenery at that point in time. And when you walk in, you don't even recognize that anymore, you know? Um, so I will, I'll see if I can't get it into the Lakeville Journal um, and I'll see if I can't get it into um, the Waterbury, either through Lynn or Ruth. So tell you what I'm going to do. Just after we're finished here, Donna, I'm going to update the press release to fix Matt's name um, because that's uh, something that is, in fact, time sensitive. Right. So you could have that within five minutes from okay. where we're at. Um, I'll give it back to you in Word and PDF format. Word okay. was in case you wanted to edit it or just copy paste it into the newsletter, um, but also PDF so you can just sort of send it out on an email blast to the press, whatever, okay. whatever works for you. So okay. I'll go ahead and take care of that. I think, uh, Matt, I don't know if we want to vote for that or just by consensus, whatever you feel is the most appropriate way. Um, yeah. But that's the next step. I think I'd, I'd like to hear, um, Karen, do you have any comments about the, it's about the survey questions? No, I think, I think they're really good. I think it's very complete. Um, I would also recommend if Donna's going to put it in the Lakeville Journal and and the Waterbury that maybe she, if she's able to put it on the spectrum, you know, that paper that everybody reads and they don't write much about Kent, but it goes everywhere in, okay. in, in our town and it's free. So why not? Um, maybe another idea, <laughs> this is a little bit crazy, is to have one flyer in the Kent wine and spirit shop where a lot of other people go. Right. So, oh yeah. No, I can do that. Just, we don't, we, you know, we don't want to inundate the, the merchants with it, but I think the places you've already mentioned are where people are most likely to go. Okay. Good thought. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. That sounds, that's actually a good idea. I didn't even think of that. Um, Adam, you have any comments or questions? Um, that, so we, we went through the, we went through the survey before you got on and, um, Glenn had made all of the changes that we discussed at our at our last special meeting, um, and uh, so, you know now is about the time that you suggested that we start the survey. So, do you have any you have any comments about any of this stuff? No, I think that when we went through it last time and Glenn made those changes, then I, I think the survey questions are good, and I think getting it going now and and I like that it's going to end, and people know that it'll has that it comes to an end. That way somebody doesn't look at it and say, oh, well, I'll get to that. Someday, right? You know. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, then I, 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 I'm going to say that I, that I don't feel the need for a motion, but just that I'll, I'll, I'll make the comment that, that there is consensus on the, on the members of the subcommittee who are um, in attendance tonight that the, that the survey is ready to go out um, and that the promotional materials are ready to be um, finalized and posted um, both on, you know, electronically on social media um, on the town website and in um, various strategic locations in town, along with a, a few copies of the uh, of a few paper copies of the survey for those who don't have access to uh, um, a computer or to ability to do it electronically. Perfect. I think that's great. Thank you, everybody. I think uh, I'll keep working away on the background information on the plan, and uh, I anticipate that we'll have our first working session on, on themes of the plan around the end of September, and I'll work with Donna to get a date scheduled when we're ready to rock and roll. That, that was, that was going to be my last, um, my last comment was, um, I know Mark's not here, and Mark, uh, you know, it's, it's a, we probably wasn't available because we didn't have enough time to um, not enough advance notice. So I would I would prefer if we could if we don't set up meeting dates tonight that we think about um, when we should meet and then and then make sure that we can all be there. Um, so I have on my calendar right now in September I have the twenty third as being and and simply because. That is the fourth Thursday of the month. So I have reserved that for Kent because on my calendar, if I don't reserve dates, they can get chewed up. And then Kent says, well, we want a meeting. And this is, well, I'm not there. So that's a possibility. I also have put a soft hold, I call it, on my calendar for Thursday the 30th, thinking that Thursdays might be good days for you guys. So if you'd like to pick Thursday one of the those, 16th, you said? Uh, 23rd and 30th of September. Oh, and the 30th. Yeah, 23rd and 30th of September. So you're going to do two meetings in September. No, no, no. I'm suggesting, Donna, that let's-, let's One or on the other. Exactly. So okay. I don't know what, what the commission schedule is like and what else is going on and which day might work better. If you wanted I'm, to do a poll of the either. commission. I can do either one. It doesn't matter. But it, it, it's a Thanks. month. Of, you're good, sorry. Karen, either one? Yes, absolutely. Um, I am traveling on the 23rd. Um, okay. Well, then let's do the 30th. But I'm also I'm also out of town on the 30th, so which I, I I can so the 30th can can work. I'll just I'll just call in like Adam's doing tonight from out of town. Um, the 23rd, I'm, I'm actually in the air. Um, at Other than so the 30th is going to be better for me. But let's let let's wait to see what Mark says. Okay. Yeah. All right. So. It, it doesn't have to be a Thursday. I just offered those days because that's your normal meeting day. But if everybody says, no, we want to do Monday the blank, then uh, I'll look at my calendar and see if we can make that work. So let's check around and see the date that works best for everybody. I think in-person is better, uh, it, you know, like in a Zoom type format or whatever. So let's see what works. All right, I'll send out a doodle poll for either the 23rd or the 30th and six o'clock is still a good time for everybody, right? Okay. And Donna, if you want to throw out some other dates, you and I can work on that. In other words, if Matt's going to be in the air or challenged in terms of attending, that we, I can throw out other dates as well. So you and I can let's, coordinate Let's not on even that. put the 23rd on there. I mean, Matt can't be there and it's better if, if, if Matt was there. So if you, if Donna, if you can put on some other dates, um, maybe we can get a, a date that everybody, that it works for everybody. Do we I have said, alternates Anna. also? Do we have alternates on this commission or board or whatever we call it? No. Committee? Yeah, no. no. I mean, we definitely want Matt to be there, but. Well, I can shoot for the 28th, 29th, or 30th. I can't do the 27th because I have Inland Wetlands that night. Okay. But Donna, I will send you an email in about the next five or 10 minutes, which is going to have the revised press release. Okay. I will give you dates from my calendar that okay. are available, and then okay. you take off the ones that don't work for you, and the rest can go in the doodle poll, and we'll see what we get back. Okay, that sounds great. Wonderful. Good to go. All right. Thank you so much, Glenn. Um, Adam or Karen, anything else you want to add for tonight? No, I think we're, I think we're doing well. 
I just wanted to apologize. I was late. Um, I took a very impromptu trip to the Adirondacks and, and now I have to go back. <laughs> so, um, You're going to drive back to the Adirondacks tonight? No, no. I'm here in the Adirondacks. Oh. I drove up last night and got up here late. And now I have to go back because I have to go to a hockey tournament that I didn't know that I was going to have to go to. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, um, so I have to go back tonight. It's, it's, it's going to be a nice drive. <laughs> well, are you going to get some fishing in then? You know, are you going to go out now and catch the hatch? Um, no, uh, because we're going to eat and then I'm going to get on the road, um, <laughs> which is really a bummer because the Osable is it's a great river. Amazing. Yes, it Total. is. Yeah. How it's long will it take river. you to get back? Three and a half hours. Oh, that's not too bad. <clears throat> Damn hockey, anyways. I know, right? Wait, it's well, it's overtime, dude. Your grandson <laughs> and Fuller have a tournament tomorrow in, in somewhere down in New York. <laughs> Remember right. when we just played hockey and when the pond froze? <laughs> I used to like that. He just went, walked out the back and there it was. Huh? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank um, you. We'll, uh, we'll see, see you guys in September. Thank you. Thank you very you much. Too. Good night. Okay. Bye, Donna. Bye. Let's see. How do I stop this? <laughs>